Hello my dear friends, you are in the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 26th of July of 2023. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. We can say that the decisive week has come. The week when the entire, probably, summer campaign will be determined. Whether the Russians are going to win or the Ukrainians will be able to penetrate the Russians' defense belt and to successfully counterattack and to regain their lost positions in the vicinity of Artemovsk and, of course, in the Zaporozhye area in the vicinity of Bradley Square. But yet, the Russians were able to re repel every single Ukrainian attempt to attack on every single front lines. First, of course, we are going to start with Zaporozhye area, with Bradley Square, with Petihatki area. This morning, as we discussed in the morning video of the local time, the Ukrainians launched significant offensive operation, operation in this area, and probably that attack, that wave of attack, those waves of attack, were the heaviest uh, since the beginning of uh, this special military operation uh, attack by the Ukrainian forces, that was implemented by the Ukrainian forces. That offensive operation started at uh, 4 a.m. of the local time. At 5 a.m., as we discussed in the previous video, the Ukrainians, uh, the Russians managed to calculate up to 15 armored vehicles. At 6 a.m. of the local time, the Russians started receiving the first numbers of, uh, of the results of Ukraine attack, and the, Ukraine, the Russians managed to shut down at least four tanks. At 7 a.m., the, the Russians managed to destroy five tanks, and at 8 a.m. of the local time, the Ukrainians were completely defeated and were forced to step back. After that, there was a few updates that the Ukrainians sent more and more waves, but it was very difficult to understand whether that was speculation or attempt to reduce the media effect of that greatest defeat. Very difficult to understand. At noon time and later, we started receiving more and more video and photo confirmations. During those operations, we got update that a lot of Ukrainians have already surrendered and that uh, Russians managed to capture around 30 uh, Ukrainian soldiers. Furthermore, we got a very interesting piece of information that somewhere at 1 p.m. of the local time, the Ukrainians managed to enter Rabotina. So as a result of attack, the Ukrainians somehow managed to enter the uh, the edge of the settlement and even to start fightings and clashes in the first buildings in that settlement. But uh, later, when, and as I understand, uh, later somewhere at 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. we got more updates from this bridgehead and we got the real purpose, the video, of geolocated video of the real purpose of the Ukrainians attacks. So at 1 p.m. the Ukrainians entered the settlement, but that was not a real operation, not the, sec um, not the primary operation, that was the secondary operation. The Ukrainians were planning to try to pin down the Russians and to force them to send all the forces they have and operational reserves to the edge, uh, to the edge positions uh, to slow down and to repel the Ukrainians' attack. Meanwhile, the main Ukrainian forces continue advancing to the south, and according to probably one of the most famous Julie location of today uh, we will let's take a look at that geolocation we uh, see that the number of ukrainian armored vehicles were left in the fields some sources were saying that this is already uh, destroyed armored vehicles or something like this but those armored vehicles according to this video as you, if you can if you can take a look closer to this armored vehicle was weren't destroyed they were abandoned and the, pro the thing is that if we take a look, this video, as I understand, was geolocated. At least the sources that published that video uh, show shown us this geolocation. As you can see, uh, the one more time, uh, one Ukrainian wave entered Rabotina and the Russians were forced to drop some operational resources to fight with the Ukrainians. And the second wave moved further to the south with main purpose to bypass the Russians' defense belt on the eastern flank of the salient and to attack them in their back. And this is exactly the video of those armored vehicles that managed to bypass Russians' defense belt. There is two Bradleys and one T-64 tank. And as you can see, there are no explosions and these armored vehicles are completely nor in normal condition. That means that Ukrainians, as soon as they got these positions, they started the storming operation of the trenches on the north, so behind the Russian positions. And as I understand, we haven't received any video or photo geolocations of that. But as I understand, based on that geolocation, the Ukrainians, as a result of today's suicide offensive operation, managed to establish control over this defense belt, this one. And uh, 
uh, probably uh, later those armored vehicles that were abandoned in the fields were destroyed by the Russian artillery uh, or Lancet strikes as, and I understand that soon we're going to receive more updates and more video of that but anyway uh, the Ukrainians completely were defeated obviously but the when it, it's when talking about the number of losses but when talking about the taking control of another defense belt we see that the Ukrainians managed no matter the price no matter the losses to advance and to develop at least a little bit the bridgehead and the russians as I understand were forced to step back from this defense belt to the south and to the east so this is for now this is yet unconfirmed information because uh it's not just important to establish control over the defense belt it is very important important to hold the positions and to repel the russian counterattack, which obviously will take place during the 26th of july and the night of 27th of july Furthermore, the Russians were using a very interesting tactic because uh, during the previous waves of attacks, the Russians started attacking the Ukrainian positions using artillery and drones just in the mid, on, on, on the territory, in the sector of midfield, somewhere in this area. But today, the Russians started bombing and shelling the Ukrainians in the vicinity of Novodanilovka. And we got very interesting video geolocated of explosions and smoke of Ukrainian forces while they're moving, while they were moving in the vicinity of that settlement. So basically the Ukrainians haven't even managed to enter not just the Russians defense belt, some parts, some uh, some part of Ukrainian armored vehicles and equipment were destroyed at the beginning of this suicide and very bloody trip. The Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation reported that the Russians managed to repel the Ukrainians' attack, of course, of forces of 47th Mechanized Brigade, of course, of 118th Mechanized Brigade, and of course, of the forces of 33rd Mechanized Brigade and probably 117th and 16th Mechanized Brigade. As a result of those clashes that took place among these fields, the Ukrainians lost at least uh, 33 tanks, 33, um, 33 armored vehicles, including 22 tanks, 10, uh, infant, 10 infantry uh, armored vehicles and one uh, probably infantry personal carrier or something like this. Furthermore, the Ukrainians, a lot of Ukrainian soldiers were captured and uh, they are currently is, uh, under Russian control. They have been arrested and currently they are giving their own like uh, uh, situation to the investigators. So this is the situation about the Bradley Square. And uh, today I got a very interesting joke on the Telegram channel that somebody suggested to rename the Bradley Square probably to the Bradley Town Hall because the number of armored vehicles of Ukrainians that were destroyed in this area probably this is a yearly production plan for some European country like United Kingdom or even maybe of United States of America. A lot of armored vehicles were destroyed in this bridgehead. Now we are moving to uh, Pitihatki, just a few updates from this area uh, that we discussed in the morning video the ukrainians um, after another reconnaissance and combat in this area took a decision to step back but they were attacked by the russian uh, drones and so on now we are moving to the second very interesting region of this area to the bradley square uh, today we also got a lot of updates uh, the ukrainians made few attempts to attack staromayorska and according to the video geolocated videos we have currently the ukrainians um, were able to establish control over the northern part. They continue sending more and more light vehicles in this area. We haven't seen tanks in that settlement. And today we got the first geolocation video, geolocated video, uh, telling us and showing us the process of withdrawal positions by the Russian forces. On this video, we see how the Russian forces received in order to step back. And after that, they left the northern part of that settlement. And from the Ukrainian side, we see, we got the video how the Ukrainians managed to enter the northern part of Staromayorska. As you can see, the northern part is already reduced to ruins. The Ukrainian soldiers were doing some kind of clearing operation. And as a result of that clearing and storming operation, the Ukrainians managed to capture a lot of Russian soldiers in the northern part of Staromayorska. So this is the progress of the Ukrainians in this area. The Russians during the day continue bombing and shelling the Ukrainian forces, Ukrainian reserves that were heading to the south. 
trying to slow down them as much as possible but as we can see uh, that didn't help much of course the russians managed to destroy a few ammo depots probably a pl few platoons or even squads were destroyed or uh, slowed down as, as a result of artillery fire but anyway the ukrainians continued advancing and they entered that settlement furthermore the russians published very interesting reading from prichistovka this is very interesting because uh, uh, this is another logistic hub that ukrainians use for the deployment of their forces to the vremia of tactical bridgehead also this settlement is located very close to the combat line and this is a perfect position for the ukrainians to accumulate their shells munitions rounds and so on the russians managed to discover another ammo depot and destroy them during these days during another attempt of the ukrainian forces to attack russian positions the ukrainians from their side continue using their swarm drone tactics doctrine on this video we see how the ukrainians were we're trying to, was trying to we're trying to destroy attack russian tank uh, t72 but as you can see there is a additional protection on the tank but uh, that protection wasn't enough to save the tank and the tank basically was destroyed as a result of uh, attack probably not as a result of drone attack because as you can see there is a, like a tank driver who was running so basically as i understand the ukrainians managed to damage the tank then the tank driver left the tank and then the rush the ukrainians using more drones attacked the tank from many sides and destroyed that the Minister of Defense, uh, for example, today haven't provided us the number of Ukrainian losses on this front line because the report was mainly concentrated on the um, Bradley Square or Bradley Town Hall and uh, we haven't received any numbers of Ukrainian losses on Vremivka tactical bridgehead on, and on Ugledar. Uh, area as well now we are getting to marinka front line the marinka have been activated one more time the russians started bombing or continued bombing and shelling the ukrainian positions on the north of nova mikhailovka this is the supply and support roads that the ukrainians were using to attack to counter attack russian trenches and fortifications on the south of marinka and the east of pabeda probably the russians managed to discover the ukrainian movements and they attacked them using the flamethrower systems and currently as i understand within the next 20 for 48 hours the russians will restart their offensive uh, offensive operation among these fields and they will try to attack the stronghold that they lost during the previous week as a result of ukrainian counter-offensive operation now we're moving to krasnogorovka and probably and now currently this is probably the most important settlement on this bridgehead the russians waste a lot of time by trying to attack and establish control over the western part of marinka as i understand the russians took a decision to change their focus and after successful operation towards the coal mines, the Russians have activated another offensive operation in the direction of Krasnogorovka. And currently this city is under very heavy fire of artillery shells, of drones and so on. Today the, uh, the people from this area published a video of a lot of smokes inside of Krasnogorovka. And basically the Russians started bombing and shelling the settlement heavily. This is a very powerful stronghold of the Ukrainians. Furthermore, the Russians published very interesting video how they managed to discover the anti-tank position that the ukrainians were using to bomb and attack the russians in the vicinity of the coal mine using their anti-tank um, equipment stugna the russians managed to discover the ukrainian position and after that using the drones uh, using the just fvp drone attack they destroyed another ukrainian position so as you can see the russians are very very act active active on this front line and probably there is a very high chances that if the russians continue the same way sooner or later they will launch offensive operation and they will start clashes for this dust this residential area to the south this is the best bridgehead for the russians because this area of krasnogorovka is separated from the main town by the railroad ways and for the russians it is very easy to discover to track every single movement along these railroad ways so let's see i remind you that the main forces who uh, locate, who is located who are located in the settlement are the 59th motorized brigade and 79th uh, air assault brigade and i reminded that 79th air assault brigade during the previous day days made an offensive counter offensive operation in the direction of the coal mine and that attack as we understand was repelled by the russians now we are moving probably to the most interesting also another interesting part of the combat line to klishevka a lot of talks a lot of speculation a lot of rumors a lot of uh, different things comes from this area some sources are saying that Klishevka has already 
uh, fallen. Uh, some sources are saying that the Russians still control this settlement. Today we got one geolocation from the central part of Klishevka, and this is the Russian soldiers who were who were passing by this um, uh, this small church, which confirms that this area still remains under the Russian control. This is the Russian troopers infantry. Maybe by the time we I start making this video, the Russians were forced to step back, but we haven't received any geolocation of the, about that. And currently, this settlement is under Russian control. Furthermore, the Russians continue uh, very aggressive, probably counter artillery duels with the Ukrainians. And today we got a lot of videos of another, for example, another destroy M77 Hovitzer. And some sources are saying, I'm not sure about this, but some sources are saying, at least the author of that video. Uh, was saying that the Russians destroyed the Howitzer M777 that were was using the cluster shells that the Ukrainians were using against the Russian forces in Klishevka. Furthermore, the Russians destroyed and um, attacked another Ukrainian forces that were located in the forest in the vicinity of Berkhovka Water Reserve. The Russians managed to capture and to turn initiative completely in their favor, and now they're trying just to hold the situation and not to allow the, Ru the Ukrainians to break the situation one more time and to launch their own counter offensive operation. Furthermore, the Russians were bombing and shelling the Ukrainian positions in the vicinity of Fyodorovka and Markova. On this video, we see how the Russians managed to destroy a uh, few artillery systems on this bridgehead by the Russian forces. A uh, very difficult and very terrible video we got today from Dubo Vasilyevka. Probably I will show you just a few seconds and nothing more. And on this video, you can see the small cemetery of the soldiers buried in the black pockets. And probably those were the soldiers, uh, maybe of the Russian forces, uh, that the Russians lost during the battle of this bridgehead with the Ukrainian forces. And also, we got another video, a very interesting video from Artemovs from the Western stronghold, from the Western stronghold, from the Domino, and probably from the. And as you can see, there are still a lot of buildings that the Russians can use to fight with the Ukrainians if they will take a decision to attack Russian forces. Also, the Ukrainians continue attacking the Russian positions on the southern flank in direction of Andreevka and in direction of Kurdumovka. Both these two settlements still remain under Russian controls and we got today another video confirmation that the Ukrainians were trying to attack the Russian tank that was uh, let's that was uh, running along the road between Andreevka and the uh, channel and uh, as you can see uh, this area is still under Russian control furthermore we got another video from the Ukrainian sources how they were attacking trying to track and attack the Russian commandos that was trying to hide in the in the forest and the Ukrainian the author of the video claims that the Ukrainians were using cluster shells to attack the Russian positions along the railroad ways so the Ukrainians launched a small artillery preparation before the next wave of attack in the direction of these two settlements and for these purposes also the Ukrainians continue their counter artillery duels and on this video we see how the Russians managed to Ukrainians managed to destroy one artillery system Grad and at least two raiders that the Russians were using for counter artillery duels so as you can see uh, the level of losses is very big furthermore the russians lost uh, like a number just a number of forces that were destroyed raiders forces armored vehicles and so on so the Ukrainians try to discover try to attack the russian forces before the next wave or current during the current wave of attack in direction of klishevka and andreevka and kurdumovka the ministry of defense of russian federation reported that as a result of fierce fightings on the front line between donetsk and let's say Siversk, the Ukrainians lost 210 soldiers, 10 armored vehicles and 8 artillery systems. As you can see, the Russians have restarted their um, counter, very effective counter-artillery duels. The Ukrainians lost two M777 Hovitzers. The Ukrainians lost uh, uh, three Krab Hovitzers. The Ukrainians uh, lost uh, D20, D30 and M119 artillery system. As you can see, the level of losses was very heavy from the Ukrainian side. Now we are moving to the north and to the area of Siversk. Today the Russians published another video, maybe that's how they managed to destroy another crap that was included into the report of Minister of Defense. The Ukrainians were using this crap to support and supply the uh, Ukrainian offensive operation in the direction of Razdolovka, Fyodorovka and Vesolia. 
Now we are moving to Liman front line to this area. The Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation reported that as a result of fierce fighting in this area, the Russians managed to advance and to develop their bridgehead in the vicinity of Sergeyevka. According to information we got, the Russians managed to get deeper for another three kilometers and to develop the bridgehead to the north and to the south for another three kilometers. So the Russians continue advancing. For now, we got report that they managed to establish control just over Sergeyevka. According to this piece of information we can say that the Russians haven't completed the clearing operation in Nadia and Novoyegorovka but some sources have already reported that the Russians managed to capture those settlements the Ukrainians continue sending more and more reserves but their reserves are not endless we understand this uh, for sure and very interesting update we got from this area the Ukrainians as a result probably of regrouping or something like this were, was for, were forced to redeploy 43rd mechanized brigade in the direction of Kupin's front line. The Ukrainians understand the value of this bridgehead. The Ukrainians probably were plan to use this brigade maybe in the vicinity of Artemovsk or in Zaporozhye area, but they were forced to use their last strategical reserves, one of the last uh, strategical reserves, on the Kupinsk and Liman front line. When talking about uh, Kuziomovka, the, the Russians also advanced in this area. To be more precise, the 7th motorized regiment uh, developed uh, offensive operations. As a result of that attack, the Russians managed to get closer to Ukrainian positions in Beristova and Stilmachovka. The situation for the Ukrainians is critical in this area. The Ukrainians published the video how they discovered, tracked and destroyed the Russian tank in this area. So this is the only thing that we got from the Ukrainians. And it is very interesting that both sides, either the Russians and the Ukrainians, try to keep silence about this area and not to provide any piece of information at all. Just the Russian, the, just the Minister of Defense, the only official resource source that provided us any official information was the Minister of Defense. And during the previous two days, including today, they uh, are saying about more and more advances of the Russians. The Minister of Defense also reported that as a result of fierce fightings, the Ukrainians lost on the Liman front line 190 soldiers, including nine armored vehicles and five artillery systems. And when talking about Kupin's front line, the Ukrainians lost 135 soldiers and eight tanks so the level of losses is very heavy furthermore the level of losses on of the ukrainians on the kupinsk and liman front line and this is not a very big front line as you can see is even higher in comparison with donetsk front line that starts somewhere at marinka and ends on the seversky donetsk so basically the level of losses on the kupinsk and liman front line are higher in comparison with in any other front line in the special military operation. We understand the value of clashes, we understand the level of pressure. The only thing that we don't understand is the level of progress of the Russian forces on this bridgehead. We understand the Russian plans, we understand the, what the Russians are planning to do, and we understand that the decisive week has come and this week will determine everything and the end of the summer military campaign on this bridgehead. The Russians also continue bombing and shelling the Ukrainian positions along the border. For example, on this video we see how the Russians managed to discover and to attack uh, the Ukrainian positions, the um, the last the place uh, the um, of Ukrainian accumulation of forces, where a small stronghold, probably few Ukrainians, was discovered uh, and was attacked by the Russian artillery system. Furthermore, we got another video how the Ukrainians uh, send their scouts, five uh, soldiers, reconnaissance team. That team, that reconnaissance team, was discovered by the Russian T-72 tank, and uh, after that, the Russian tank attacked the Ukrainian forces, and they were. And probably they were killed. At least the author of that video reported that Ukrainians lost those five soldiers. And another geolocated position, uh, how the Russians managed to uh, discover the Ukrainian forces in the small uh, village Udi. Uh, this is, uh, like as you can see, Ukrainian soldiers were moving on the, like, on the street. And after the Russians managed to discover them, the Russians made a strike and destroyed Ukrainian forces in that settlement. As you can see, the situation is very critical. And let's finish this video with the Kherson direction. Uh, the Russians published a few videos how they were bombing and shelling the Ukrainian positions along the bank of the river and the level of losses of Ukrainians still on the high level, 40 soldiers per day. This is a very um, heavy level of losses when, when we understand that there are no combat line on the ground. 
just the islands and the and the lake and another ammo depot or probably fuel depot was destroyed or in the vicinity of Nova Kachovka and the Russians were using guided bombs for that purposes. Maybe the Ukrainians were using these big buildings uh, for the, as a raiders or purpose with the raiders, but we see how the probably the Russians were using guided bombs for that attack. So the situation is critical. The situation is very critical and this week will determine everything and we see that Ukrainians paid too big price for very small advances and it's very difficult to understand how this uh, part of the special military operation will end and how the situation can affect the next months and the beginning of the autumn military campaign. And that's it for today. Military summary channel reminds to condemn any